A couple of things that people said back in 2017 when I told them that I want to start a YouTube channel was that, you know, you're not going to get any subscribers and there's already too many people doing the same thing that you're doing and, uh, you know, the train has already left the station, so there's no idea. But now we're here, three years later, and we are over 300,000 subscribers right now, which is totally insane. And I thought we should talk about why I think you should start a YouTube channel in 2020. One of the questions that I get asked a whole lot here on YouTube and over on my Instagram is, should I start a YouTube channel in 2020 and is it going to be worth it? And my short answer to that is gonna be yes and yes. So when it comes to starting a YouTube channel, I think that a lot of people have the vision of that they start the channel, they post a couple of videos, and all of a sudden they have this explosion of subscribers, uh, 100,000 views on a couple of videos, and everything is going well and dandy, and uh, you know, on that way it is. But the reality is that starting a YouTube channel and making it a successful one is really hard. Like, there's a lot of hustle going into a successful YouTube channel. Looking at myself, when I started out this channel back in 2017, my main focus was not to grow my YouTube channel into what it is today. It was mainly because I wanted to get better at photography and videography to be able to do my freelance work and all of the other things such as like getting the views on my videos and growing the audience and our community was something that was just like a huge bonus and something that would be cool if that happened down the line. And I mean, I had this channel for two years before it even started to take off a little bit with the subscriber growth. I think it took me like one and a half year to get to 800 subscribers, and then another half year to get to like 6,000 subscribers. And then a year later from that, like right now, we are over 305,000 subscribers at the recording of this video. So the last year alone, we have grown with over 300,000 subscribers, which is totally mind blowing, but it also shows us that consistency and perseverance is two key factors that you have to have if you want to make your YouTube channel successful. And when you're just starting out, it's gonna be really hard to know what kind of niche you should go for because you always hear people talking about like, you should have a niche, you should have this, you should have that. But I think that the most important thing when you're just, like just starting your YouTube channel is gonna be that you focus on something that you think is fun to do. Maybe that you think it's fun to make vlogs or time-lapse videos or, uh, I don't know, stop motion or drawing videos. It doesn't really matter because what you think is the most fun to do is gonna be the most valuable for you to keep your channel going in the direction that you want it to. And the best thing is, if you have some value for yourself in the videos that you are producing, because then the videos is not gonna be something that you do for your audience in the beginning, it's gonna be something that you do because you get some value out of making the videos. And looking back at my channel, like in the beginning, it was only Swedish videos, which was like not something that I would go and do today, because I think that doing like Swedish videos would limit my viewer base really much, you know? So if I were to start a YouTube channel today, I would go directly in English. But the whole reason that I decided to go for English was because I wanted to get better at speaking English, you know? Instead of just doing it when you travel abroad or when you have a friend on the phone that is uh, from another country, then I wanted to make it so that I speak English as much as I possibly can so that I can sound and almost be a fluent English speaker because I thought it was so much fun to speak English. And maybe you're watching right now and thinking to yourself, should I start in English or should I start in my mother tongue? And I would say, start in what you feel most comfortable with because the hard part about starting in a foreign language is gonna be that 
if you start doing videos in English, it's gonna feel way more forced than it would be if you started doing videos in your mother, mother, mother tongue. It's gonna be way easier for you to get comfortable with camera when you're speaking your own language because conveying your personality and conveying yourself onto camera in a different language is something that requires a lot of time. But if you're willing to invest that time, then I would say go for like an English channel to begin with. The most important thing to focus on is going to be to make videos that you think are fun to do because that is gonna develop your skills faster than if you make something just because you think that it's gonna be successful. So say for example that you enjoy making vlogs, then I think that you should focus on making vlogs. The downside about making vlogs, especially if you're just a new like small channel, is that it's gonna be really hard for you to grow making vlogs because no one knows who you are and no one has a relationship to you and your vlogs and it's gonna be really hard to like reach an audience that will tie into your vlogs and know what you're doing on a daily basis or weekly or monthly. I don't know how, how often you want to produce videos, but you know, I think you get the point, huh? And something that I personally noticed when it comes to vlogs is that usually you have to have some money to be able to make that vlog interesting. Maybe purchasing products, maybe uh, driving somewhere just to get some dope content or taking a flight to another country or maybe some new tech that you just bought that will make your videos more interesting. And those things is gonna be extremely hard to get in the beginning of your YouTube career. So if your sole purpose is to grow your YouTube channel, then I would try to focus on something that you're really good at and try to do as many tutorials and how-to videos on that particular topic that you can. And when you're doing that, that is also gonna help you trying to find somewhat of a niche for your channel because you're starting to do a lot of videos on that particular topic so people will go to your channel because you are the go-to guy or go-to girl just because you are making videos on that topic for them to enjoy. But the downside of having like one niche on your channel and only making videos about that is that when you try to branch out and make a bunch of other videos is that you're gonna have a hard time to get more views on those videos and there's not gonna be as many subscribers that wants to watch those videos because that subscriber base is here because of those tutorials and those videos not because of what you try to post so it's really good to like try to post a little bit of both and then you can make those videos that you think are the most fun and then those people that came here from the tutorials they are like gonna stay and watch a little bit of those videos not everyone because I mean for example on my channel if I post a video on how to shoot b-roll I guarantee you that that video is gonna get a whole lot more views than if I post a vlog that is me here in the office trying to do something fun. Even though the vlog might be super fun and it's hilarious, but there's a lot of people that are here mainly because of my tutorials. But I think it's super important to make the audience that has found you through their tutorials relate a little bit more to you through the vlogs and through the videos that you enjoy doing the most because that is gonna make your audience a stronger audience and build the subscriber base into a community such as the one that we have here on the channel. And as I've stated in a bunch of my videos before, like consistency is going to be key if you want to be successful on YouTube. And it might sound like a really cliche thing, but it comes down to like, the more videos that you have posted, the bigger the chances that the algorithm is gonna like push out some of those videos to new people that haven't seen your channel before. And I mean, if you're not consistent with the content that you're producing, then imagine if one video get that like Wah! super boost and you haven't posted a video in a couple of months because you thought everything was over, then you cannot take advantage of that momentum when that happens because then you're gonna be like in a, uh, how do you say when the beers are sleeping, you know, all the winter and you know, you're gonna be too late to the ball. I think you can say it like that as well. So consistency and perseverance is two things that is crucial to making your YouTube channel grow 
at a steady rate and making sure that you have the best possible chances to get that one successful video that might take your channel to the next thousand subscriber mark or hundred thousand subscriber mark. And I think that the motivation to post YouTube videos has to come from you because you think it's so much fun to make the videos that you're producing. And that is why I said, don't start a YouTube channel in 2020 if you're planning on doing something that someone else is already doing just because they found success, unless you actually think it's fun. Because if you don't think the videos that you're doing is fun to do, then the whole point of having Having a YouTube channel is gonna fall flat because if you're not enjoying the content, that is gonna shine through to your audience and ultimately you're gonna get tired of the content that you're producing. So I would say try to focus on the videos that you think are fun to do combined with a couple of videos that you know people will search for. And when I'm saying tutorial videos and how-to videos and information videos, then the best thing is going to be to use a tool that is called TubeBuddy that I used a whole lot when I started my YouTube channel to be able to find what people is actually searching for. So say for example that you want to make tutorials on how to shoot b-roll, then you can search on how to shoot b-roll and see how many people are actually searching for this and how good is my channel going to rank in this search result. But one thing that you really need to think of when you're using TubeBuddy is that you shouldn't let TubeBuddy dictate the content that you're producing. And what I mean by that is basically that the videos that you make is something that you would make anyways. TubeBuddy should only be like help for you to find the right title and keywords and tags for the video that you are posting. So I really hope that you like this video and that you feel motivated to start your own YouTube channel and build up an awesome community just like the one that we have here. And uh, if you like the video, do give it a thumbs up because it does help a lot. So thanks so much for that. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, it's gonna be right here. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, oh, Peter from Sweden saying goodbye. Hi.